today's first speaker is Mathieu Stianon from Penn State, and he'll talk about the formality theory for differential graded manifolds. But... Well, uh, thank you. Thanks uh, to the organizer for organizing this nice conference. Uh, I think that this is the conference which, which has been the most work for me fighting with the airlines to not to <laughs> waste the ticket, not to waste my money. Uh, and thanks for the audience for, for coming to my talk instead of just staying home and despite avoiding the bad weather and, and attending to Zoom. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, what we did. Uh, it's, a, it's a joint project with uh, Xuan Yi Diao, who's, who's now in Taiwan, and uh, Ping Xu, who's here in the audience. Uh, essentially, what we did was uh, extend Concevich formality theorem uh, to the realm of differential graded manifolds. So the, I, I tried to make, I was told to make the talk very elementary, right? So uh, I will first recall the well-known Concevich theorem for in the, in the case of classical smooth manifolds. And then I'll move on to what we actually did, which is, uh, version of that same theorem for differential graded manifolds. And then finally, uh, I'm gonna give applications, uh, three applications of our theorem. Okay. So, Con Concevich's formality theorem says that there exists uh, a certain, certain morphism uh, relating to two types of objects on a, on a manifold M. So given a, ma a smooth manifold M, uh, you can form what are called the, the polyvector fields or the multi-vector fields on one side. Uh, that's what I'm, that's called a, well, yeah, that's called T poly. Uh, so essentially what you do is you just take the, the, the vector fields and you, you just wedge them. Right, you form the exterior algebra generated by uh, vector fields on M. You can do that for any degree and then you take the direct sum over K. And, and here there's a, a slight degree shift, right? We, we decide to put the, the vector fields in degree zero, the bivector fields in degree one, the tri-vector fields in degree two and so on. And then the, the functions are placed in degree negative one. So the, the grading starts at k equal to negative one, and then it goes up. And on, on this space t poly, uh, there are three natural uh, algebraic structures. There's the, the Schartan bracket that, that was mentioned yesterday in Alexander's talk, uh, which is an operation of, of degree zero. Uh, and then, there's the, the wedge product, which because of the, the degree shift is actually a, an operation of degree plus one. And then uh, the third operation is, is trivial. We make T poly, which is Z graded into a coaching complex, simply by considering the, the trivial differential, the zero differential. And then, when you look at this graded, the Z graded vector space T poly uh, with the zero differential and the Schouten bracket, uh, you get what's called the differential graded Lie algebra. Now, uh, the Schouten bracket and the wedge product are compatible in, in the sense that, well, in the obvious, what, in what you, the sense that you, natural sense, right? Um, and so if you endow T poly, which by the way is the same as its, its cohomology since the, the co-boundary operator is trivial, with those two operations, Schouten bracket and, and wedge product, you get what's called the gerstein Abra algebra. On the other side, you've got what are called the polydifferential operators on the smooth manifold M, polydifferential or multi-differential. Multi um, it's the same, right? It's a, it's a Z graded vector space. The grading actually starts in degree negative one where you place the functions, the smooth functions on the manifold M. And then in degree zero, 
you place the algebra of linear differential operators on M. And then in degree one, you're gonna put the, the bi-differential operators, degree two, the tri-differential operators and so on. So uh, roughly what is, what is a K differential operator? It's a, it's a black box. It eats k input functions, and it spits out uh, a single function. And uh, the internal of that black box is this. What you do is essentially you apply a differential operator, a linear differential operator to each one of the k inputs. Right, so you, you've got k copies of the algebra D0 body. Then, then you multiply the k outputs. I'm gonna write m for the multiplication and that produces a single function. And actually you're allowed to take a, a sum of such things, right? So that's why dk poly is this, this tensor product over r, which is the, right, I, I think of D0 poly as a left, infinity of M module. R is the ring of smooth functions on the manifold M. Yep. Uh, when you, are you assuming that they have like a constant, uh, like, right, not right, but like a, a degree, like constant degree operator, or is it like this locally that they find? It makes a slight difference what your operators are. You, you mean the, the order of the, the, yeah. the differential operator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, there's there's no restriction on the well, they, right, they, the right the the differential operators have an order, right? The, right. The, you each. could have one which locally has a finite order, but that's totally different. I, I think everything I do is local, so yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So this this graded space D poly is also endowed with three natural algebraic structures. Uh, first, we have uh, the gaston apple bracket, which is an operation of degree zero. Uh, and essentially, it's, uh, you can see it as uh, right, the, the Lie bracket of vector fields that's essentially a commutator of derivations, right? And, and pretty differential operators are, are like derivation, except that you have K inputs, one output, right? So you can also play, if you have two such if you have a K differential operator and an L differential operator, you can also kind of commute them, right? You can apply one and then the other minus the other my time followed by the one, right? It's just that uh, you, the way you compose them, right? If you look at your, the output of your first differential operator, you can feed it to any one of the input slots, the K input slots of the second differential operator and so on. So you, you, you have to sum over all possibilities uh, and actually there are signs involved. So there's a very like the, 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 the shape, like the general idea of the formula is you take a commutator, but since you have, uh, you have to sum over all possible input slots and they are signed. So I, I, I never remember the formula, right? But it's, okay. So we've got the Gershon upper bracket. And then uh, if, there's a special bi-differential operator. So there's a special element in D1 body, which is a, a, a bi-differential operator of order zero, simply the multiplication of two functions, right? You essentially, you put the identity everywhere and you just multiply two functions, right? So you can do this operation of taking the Gerstin upper bracket with, with that multiplication operator. And this gives you uh, morphemes from dk poly to dk plus one poly. And uh, because the gaston upper bracket satisfies the Jacobi identity and the multiplication is associative, it, it turns out that this operation squares to zero. So it's a, it's a co-boundary operator, right? Uh, it's actually known as the Hochschild differential. And then finally, there's, there's a third operation, which is the kind of the easiest which is the, the cup product. Essentially what you do is if you have two such 
black box is a K differential operator an L differential operator. You can form a, a K plus L plus one differential operator simply by plus composing them by the multiplication. That's essentially the, the cup product. Okay. Now, if you look at D poly with the harsh shield differential and the Gaston Arbor bracket, uh, again, you've got a DGLA, a differential graded Lie algebra. Uh, however, this time, uh, the bracket, the Lie bracket, the Gaston Arbor bracket, and, uh, and the cup product are not compatible. However, they both are compatible with the harsh shield differential, so they, they descend to uh, harsh shield cohomology. And they are the level of harsh shield cohomology, they, they are compatible. So at the cohomology level, so the actually the so the cohomology of D poly for that uh, operation, Gaussian upper bracket with the multiplication, that's uh, essentially the the harsh shield cohomology of the the associative algebra of smooth function on M. Well, the, both the Gaussian upper bracket and the cup product descend to that level and they are compatible at that level. So they make it into a Gaussian upper algebra. Okay. And then there's a, there's a well known map uh, going from multi differential, uh, multi vector fields to multi differential operators, which is called the uh, the uh, Hoshi Costan Rosenberg map. Uh, it's essentially just a, a skewed symmetrization map, right? So you take a wedge of vector fields, you think of those vector fields as differential operators of degree of, of order one, right? So if you take their tensor product, you get such a black box. And then what you do is, uh, since this thing is uh, it's a wedge product, so it's a skew symmetric. Uh, for this map to be well defined, you need to take an alternating sum, right? So you get this HKR morphism, and this HKR morphism is 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 compatible with the the differential, the zero differential on T poly and the Hoshi differential on D poly. So it's a chain map. However, it does not respect the the Scharten and the the Gaston Apple bracket. So it's it's a chain map, but not a morphism of DG elites. However, uh, if again, if you descend to, to the level of uh, cohomology, so if, if you look at the, the map induced by the chain map HKR between the, like the trivial homology of T poly and the Hochschild cohomology of D poly, well, at, at that level, the map is a morphism of gerson apple algebra. It respects the, the Lie bracket and the, the associative multiplication. So this failure of the HKR map to, to preserve the DGLA structure, that's resolved by, by conservative formalities theorem. So uh, indeed, uh, everybody knows that a DGLA, it's just a, you can think of a DGLA as a, as a special instance of a more general type of structure, an, an L infinity algebra or strong homotopy Lie algebra according to Stashev's terminology. And then if you, if instead of playing in the world of DGLAs, if you, if you move to the, to the, the world of L infinity algebras, you, you have more morphism there. And essentially, Konsevich and later Tamarkin proved that uh, the HKR map from T poly to D poly is actually just the first bit, the first Taylor coefficient of an L infinity quasi isomorphism from T poly, from the L infinity algebra T poly to, the, uh, to, uh, the, to D poly. And uh, as is well known, Konsevich used his uh, formality theorem to, uh, to prove the existence of deformation quantization 
for any Poisson manifold. Like for any Poisson manifold, uh, there exists a star product uh, quantizing the, the Poisson by vector the, on, on that manifold. And also to, to classify the, the star products on, on the Poisson manifold. And uh, the key idea to go from uh, formality to uh, the formation quantization is just the realization that uh, quasi isomorphism of L infinity algebras, for instance, the formality morphism, induces a, a bijection between the, the, the modular sets of more carton elements of the two L infinity algebras involved. And then just to realize that the more carton elements of T poly are just Poisson by vectors on N, and then the more carton elements of D poly are star products on N. So once you have the formality morphism, you have this bijection. And so given any Poisson by vector, there exists a corresponding star product. Okay. So uh, in the project, uh, in our project with Liao and Xu, the, the two goals of our project were to uh, first prove a formality theorem for differential graded manifolds. And then as, as a consequence to, uh, to prove a, a Konsevich to flow type theorem for DG manifold. So I'm, I'm gonna recall later what this Konsevich to flow theorem is. Uh, and by doing this, we, we essentially uh, set up the uh, conjecture of uh, Kain, Konsevich and Scheuchert uh, going back to 1998. So the, the reason why we, we are interested in DG manifolds is that uh, differential graded manifolds um, or DG manifolds, or they are some, sometimes also called Q manifolds, uh, are smooth objects that enable us to deal with singularities, with singular objects. Uh, so singular objects of uh, Right. When you, we do geometry, there, there are singular, right? we are naturally led to consider singular uh, geometric objects. And those objects can be singular in kind of two ways. In the stacky way, right? that's what you get when you, you deal with uh, badly behaved quotients. Or in, you also have like derived types of singularities. And those are the type of singularities that you that you get when you when you try to form fiber product of things like intersections of of manifolds. So this is very fashionable, right? Since uh, like in, in recently, and uh, the basic object in there is this this notion of differential graded manifold. Okay, so just in one slide, let me give you a, a, a quick approximation of the definition of a, a DG manifold. So here K is gonna be uh, is gonna be a field, either the real numbers or the complex numbers. And C infinity M, I, I use the notation C infinity M to denote the sheaf of smooth K-valued functions on a smooth manifold straight M. In a Z graded manifold curly M with body straight M is, is a sheaf R of Z graded commutative sin M algebras over that smooth manifold straight M, which has this, this property that locally the this this uh, this sheaf R is uh, isomorphic to the sheaf C infinity M tensored with the, the algebra of uh, formal power series on some Z graded vector space V. What are the hats? The hats, uh, oh, just completion, right? The, this hat essentially, the, the, the hat over the S means that we, we take formal power series rather than polynomials over V and the, the 
the second hat over the tensor product uh, is technical. It just means that it allows us to take uh, infinite sums instead of finite sums. Right? That's a question. So yep. there is also the notion of Z to N manifold, right? Which resembles a lot of that. Z to N. You don't know that? I, I guess that Z2 multigrated, manifold. Multigrated, indeed, multigrated. Oh, multigrated. Uh, no, that's okay. I thought. Uh, no, yeah, because I, the idea is the same with the, you know, the formal power series, because that will help you, right? This is a key point. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, does your V have a zero degree component? Yeah. I, I, I did not hear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does B have a zero degree component? Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, it's not, not, not just the functions that are. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. you have like degree yeah. zero, uh, zero uh, variables coming from the manifold and also coming from the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to write C infinity of curly M to denote the, the space of global sections of that chief R. Uh, and I say that such a Z graded manifold curly M is finite dimensional if both its, its body and this vector space V are finite dimensional. Then a DG manifold is a Z graded manifold, so a manifold uh, of that type. And though with, uh, like in, in Alberto's talk yesterday, a homological vector field. So uh, essentially a, a derivation of this sheaf R, Q of degree plus one, uh, that squares to zero. And here are a bunch of examples of such DG manifolds. So for instance, uh, given any Lie algebra G, you can form what's called G1, and that's a, that's a DG manifold. So what, so what, what, what is the algebra of functions on G1? It's just the, uh, there's, a, there's a mistake here. There's a wedge, uh, but there's a little V, there's a little bird missing. So it's the al exterior algebra of the dual of G. And the homological vector field in this case would be the, the chevalet Eilenberg differential. Another example comes from, uh, in this way, start with any smooth manifold M, and then you can form TM shifted by one, and that's a DG manifold. So what is the algebra of functions on TM shifted by one? Well, by definition, it's just the algebra of uh, uh, differential forms on M, and here, the homological vector field Q would just be the Durand derivative. Question in your example, yeah. then C infinity G1 can be identified with the forms that are invariant, right? Somehow. Yes. Not the group. Yeah. That yeah. Is the idea. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So a third example uh, comes from complex geometry. Given any complex manifold X, you can form. Uh, T01x shifted by one. Uh, by definition, the algebra of functions on that, on that Z graded manifold is just the forms of type 0q, right? the, the anti holomorphic function, forms. And, and here, the homological vector field is simply the, the Dalbo operator. Uh, here's another class of uh, DG manifolds. Uh, a Lie algebra structure on a vector bundle A is the same thing as a, a, a DG manifold structure on A shifted by one. So here, the, the algebra of functions would just be the, the, the sections of the, the exterior algebra generated by uh, the dual of A. And the homological vector field would just come as the would arise as the chevalier allenberg differential of the Lie algebra. Um, curved L infinity algebras are instances of DG manifolds. Uh, 
So essentially, um, so one one way to look at a curve in infinity algebra is, is this: you, you've got a, a z-graded vector space G, and what you do is you you shift it, you do a degree shift. You consider G shifted by one, and then you take the the symmetric co-algebra over G shifted by one. And then an L infinity algebra structure on G is by definition just a co-derivation Q of this of degree plus one of this symmetric tensor co-algebra S of G1 that squares to zero. And this, this is actually a, the same thing as a DG manifold if you just dualize everything. Right. If you if you dualize the co-algebra, you're going to get a, an algebra of functions on a z-graded manifold, and then the dual of the co-derivation Q will become a derivation, so a vector field on G shifted by one, and that's your homological vector field. By the way, uh, an L infinity quasi isomorphism uh, right between two L infinity algebras would just be a, so it would be a, a morphism from S of G shifted by one to S of H shifted by one that commutes with uh, this pair of co derivations Q on G and Q on H. And the quasi isomorphism means that the, the first Taylor coefficient actually is a, which is a, a, a chain map that, that this would actually be a quasi isomorphism of co chain complexes. Okay, so here's a, yet another example. Given any regular foliation M on a, on a smooth manifold M, you can look at the the tangent distribution, so TF, and uh, so its 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 sections are closed under the Lie bracket of vector fields. Uh, right, they, they form an integral distribution on the on the manifold, uh, and uh, this gives you a, a DG manifold in the following way: you form what's TF shifted by one. And by definition, the, the algebra of functions on TF shifted by one, that's uh, the space of leafwise differential forms on M. And if you restrict the, the Durham differential just to leafwise differential form, you get uh, your homological vector field. And uh, well, there, there are other examples, but I, I think that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wasting too much time on, on, on examples. Okay. Okay, so now given a, a DG manifold MQ, uh, here's what, what we mean by polyvector fields on that DG manifold MQ. So, um, what we do is essentially we, we take uh, sections of the tangent bundle, so vector fields, and again, we, we wedge them, we form the exterior algebra. So there's a, there's a grading coming from the number of vector fields that you wedge, but there's, a, there's also another grading coming from the, the grading on the, the, graded, the Z graded manifold curly M. Right, so there's actually you, you get a, a bi-graded object. So what we do is uh, we take the right we, in degree n. So t poly n will be the direct sum of such uh, bi-graded things t poly m q where we sum over all couples P and Q that all, all couples PQ of integers where P 
is larger than or equal to negative one, and the sum of p and q is equal to n. Right. So that's t poly n. And then to get t poly, you do another direct sum over all n's. So the, the graded commutator of graded derivations of the, the sheaf of functions on your zeta manifold curly M. Excuse me. Uh, Question. Yes? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so go back to the previous slide. Is there, is there a reason you're taking direct sum and not direct product there in this situation of potentially infinite components? Yes, there, there, there's a reason. It's, it's because it's, it's needed to prove to prove the, the formality theorem. If you take direct product, it just it doesn't work, right? Essentially, it's, you, you have a problem with the convergence of a certain uh, spectral sequence. So there, there's a technical reason why we, we use direct sum rather than direct product. Uh, Yeah, but I think that this is taken care of by the. I, I think it's uh, it's taken care of by the fact that I, I complete here. Well, the. the, the Um, well, we, we, we can discuss that, right? We can discuss that, but, but it, it works. But there, there, are, there, there, are several, there are several degrees, right? And it, it, indeed, it's tricky. Like uh, you, you need to allow in certain, right, in certain directions, you need to allow uh, to take uh, infinite sums, right? It's more like direct products. And then in so, certain directions, you need to, to, to restrict yourself to direct sum for convergence reasons, right? But, but I think that, that what I'm showing is, 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 is correct. Okay. So, yeah, you, you, you've got your, your, your DG manifold. So you've got this sheaf of, uh, of, of functions, which is a sheaf of algebras. And then you can call, form the, you can give sense of uh, differential uh, on, to, uh, to vector fields simply as derivations of that sheaf of algebras. And then you, you have a notion of commutator of derivations. And uh, that, that, that graded commutator of graded derivations make your sheaf of vector fields on curly M into a graded D algebra. And then this, the Lie bracket of that D, D algebra uh, extends to multi-vector fields in the form. So, so you have a generalization of, to this context of this Houghton bracket. And then uh, now you have your space T poly M. And again, you have three algebraic structures on, on that space. You've got the, the Houghton bracket that we just constructed you have the, the wedge product, which is, which is very easy, right? Which is what you think. And then you have a, a differential, which now is no longer trivial, right? And this, this differential is the Scotton bracket with the homological vector field. Okay. And uh, all those three operations are compatible. So what you get is, is a differential graded gaussian number algebra. And uh, this differential gaussian number algebra structure uh, descends to uh, the level of uh, cohomology. So in cohomology, uh, this, this blue space here uh, gets, uh, inherits a, a Gaussian algebra structure. 
And for polydifferential operators, it's similar, right? You can make sense of polydifferential operators on a DG manifold MQ. And again, it's, uh, it's more complicated than in the, in the classical case, because you not only have the, the grading with, right, the, with P coming from the, the number of input slots into your, in, in your polydifferential operator, right? Uh, all of the differential operator involved in, in the black box, right, is a differential operator acting on a graded manifold. So it has a, a, a degree with respect to the, the graded manifold graduation uh, or grading, right? So that's the, the Q degree. So you have this, this pair of degrees. And what you do, you, def you define D and poly as this direct sum over all uh, couples of the integers PQ that add up to N, right? And then once you have D and poly, you define D poly as the direct sum of the D and polys over N all uh, integers N. Now, uh, D poly, uh, the, the gaussian number bracket still makes sense for this D poly version adapted to uh, Z graded manifolds. So you have your, your gaussian number bracket. And then you, you also have a differential, which is a, a modification of the Hochschild differential. You no longer take the gaussian number bracket just with the multiplication operator. Right, you, you replace the multiplication operator by the sum of multiplication operator and the homological vector field Q. Right, you, you can check M is, has degree, it's, it's P is two and it's Q is zero. And for Q, P is one and Q is one. Right, so in both for M and Q, N is in both cases equal to two. Right, so uh, M plus Q is, is, is in D, one party. Excuse me, Monsieur. So probably it's following the some of the previous questions. Is your homological vector field uh, have a finite number of terms, or it's formal? Uh, is or is or is it formal? Uh, it. I, th I think it's it it can be formal. I th yeah, I think it can be formal. Yeah. Okay. It, it lives outside of it, so we should discuss. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but it, it, the theorem is true. The theorem is true. <laughs> the definition may be wrong, but the theorem is true. Actually, actually, uh, this is uh, what I'm talking about. Is uh, uh, one one paper in the series of papers. Uh, now they are pretty much all of them are published. And, uh, and, and it is true, right? Like uh, as we were writing those papers, like we, we, we realized that some of the definitions that we wrote in the earlier papers are, are incorrect, right? <laughs> but, but, but the theorems are true, right? The, 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 the easy way out is that you don't really need to take the direct sum of the product. The only important data are that you have a selection the That's what you have to find. You don't have to take the sum, but you have to take separate components of the final sum. Okay, we, 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 we should talk. Okay, so you've got D poly uh, with this Gaussian upper bracket and this modified differential, and you, you just check that this is a differential graded D algebra. And uh, you, you also have the, the cup product, that, that, that one poses no problem. And, and you check that uh, Gerson upper bracket and cup product are both compatible with your, your modified differential. So they descend to the level of Hochschild cohomology. And uh, at, in cohomology, they are compatible. So they then do the, this blue space, the cohomology, they, they make it into a gaussian number algebra. Okay. And then uh, the, the last 
piece of information that we need to generalize is the Hochschild Kostan Rosenberg map from T poly to D poly. And there, uh, well, it's essentially the same, right? It's the same formula, except there's one subtlety is that all objects, so in particular, all uh, vector fields X here are vector fields on the graded manifold. So they are themselves, they have an internal grading. Uh, so they graded commute, right? So here, when you write your alternating sum where you shift the, where the, the vector fields shift position, right? Because they shift positions, right? You, you have Kossuth signs involved, right? So you, you need to replace the, the sign of the permutation sigma by the Kossuth sign of the permutation sigma of the graded vector fields X, of the homogeneous graded vector fields X. This, other than that, it's the same, exactly the same map, defined in the exact same way. And, and then uh, you check that the Hochschild Kostan Rosenberg map uh, is uh, uh, respects the, the, the differential. So it's a co chain map. However, it does not respect the, the brackets. So it's not a morphism of differential graded B algebras. And uh, one, one can prove that for a finite dimensional, DG manifold, the HKR map determines a, an isomorphism of vector spaces between the, the on the cohomology level. Right. However, unlike in the case of non DG, so unlike the case of classical manifolds, this HKR map level, this HKR morphism induced on the cohomology level, it does not respect the, the gerstein abel algebra structure. In fact, this induced HKR map on the cohomology level respects neither the associative products nor the, the Lie brackets. Uh, and then the question is, well, can, can this be remedied? And if, if, if this can be remedied, what, what is the correction? So in particular, right, uh, in case the homological vector field Q is, is zero, right, in, in that particular case, the HKR map would respect the, the gershon algebra structure, right, because we, we just recover the, the, the theorem, the classical theorem, right? Essentially, we, we would just have the, uh, right, you would just look at the classical theorem restricted to, uh, fixed degree and then take a direct sum over the different degrees involved and you would get that result, right? So the, the whole problem here, the failure of HKR to be a morphism of gerstein abel algebra comes from the introduction of the homological vector field Q. Well, it, it turns out that the, the, the correction is, is actually rather simple. Uh, it's, essentially the third class of the DG manifold. So uh, before I tell you what is the third class of the DG manifold, I need to tell you what is the Atia class of the DG manifold. So it's, uh, it's, it's actually fairly simple. What you do is you, you look at your graded manifold M and you, you just pick a connection on it. You pick an affine connection on it you, you, and you can choose it torsion free. Right, uh, so it's a it's it's a map like this. Right, it's a, uh, it eats two vector fields on M and returns a vector field on M. Right? And it's a, it's an operation of degree zero. It's an operation of degree zero. It's a connection. It's a covariant derivative. So it satisfies the two the two usual formulas. Right. Except that in those two formulas, you need to be a little careful, right? Everything is, is, is graded, so the, the, some terms may involve some, some, some signs. It doesn't involve like Q, right? It, no, there's no, no Q involved at that level, right? You just pick a connection. And you can, you can do that, right? You can, you can choose a connection. There exists a connection because you, right, everything is smooth here. So you have a, a partition of unities, right? So, so it, it just works, right? Okay, so your, your connection is a, uh, 
such a map. Then essentially what you do is you just consider the lead derivative of the covariant derivative nabla with respect to the homological vector field, right? And uh, although the, the covariant derivative is, is not it's not a it's not tensorial it's not a tensor right it's not a bundle map uh, this you can it's easy to check that it is a bundle map right so it's actually a bundle map from tm tensor tm to tm right so you can you can also think of it as a section of TM dual tensor TM dual tensor TM, right? Or a section of the dual of TM tensor the endomorphism of TM, right? And uh, well, well, that guy, right? This is uh, this is a space constructed out of the Z graded manifold M, right? Because M is Z graded, any object constructed from M is Z graded, right? So this is a Z graded vector space. Uh, and you have this homological vector field on M, right? Which induces uh, an operation on, on this guy, just D derivative with respect to Q, right? And because Q squares to zero, it's clear that this guy is actually in the kernel of that operator. And I, actually that operator on this, right, this is a graded vector space. Because Q has degree one, this induced operator on this Z graded vector space also has degree one. And because Q squared to zero, LQ also squares to zero, right? So in fact, this is, this is a Z graded operator with a co-boundary operator. So this is a co-chain complex. So you've got an element, a co-chain of, of degree one, right? Nabla is degree zero, Q is degree one. So this is an operator, of, uh, an, oper an object of degree one, a, a one cochain in that cochain complex. And obviously it is uh, killed by the co-boundary operator. So it's, it's a one co-cycle. But it's not exactly because it's connection, I suppose, right? Say it again. But it's not exact. It's, it's not exact, exact right? right? It looks like it's exact, but it's not exact because Nabla is not tensorial. Na Nabla is not. It's not a zero. It's not a zero cochain, right? So yeah, may exactly. I ask a question. Um, sorry. So in uh, so, so this is uh, obviously an abstraction of uh, to the existence of. Uh, uh, Q invariant connection. Yes, exactly. So in, uh, 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 just check to if, if I understand this. Uh, so if uh, if your Q is the Turbo differential, uh, mm -hmm. do you recover the classical ITA class? Yes, yes, yes. That's that's why it's that's called the, the ITA class. class, right? Yeah, exactly. Because if you if you if you specialize this construction to the case where, uh, like Dima says, M is T zero one X for a complex manifold X and Q is the Dalbo operator, right? Then the class that I just defined is, is nothing but just the, the, the usual ATIA class of the, the, the homological uh, tangent vector to that complex manifold X, the homological tangent bundle to that, the holomorphic tangent bundle to that complex manifold X, right? So that's, that's exactly why it's called the, the ATIA class, right? Uh, so it's a, it's a class of in the H1 of that co-chain complex. And then from the ATIA class, you can define the Todd class uh, according to the, this generalization of the, the usual formula, right? So here, there is the, is the Berezinian. Stupid question. Um, I mean, here you're, you're just talking about the, uh, the cohomology class of this uh, one co cycle, but you also have this definition using these, like I'm staring at. Yeah, if you look at this, this is just the, the lead derivative of, of NABLA, right? So, exactly what right? this is shorthand for, oh, okay. for what's written here. Okay, okay. 
no problem. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the this is our theorem. Yep. Oh, oh, okay. 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 So this is our theorem. Uh, this formality theorem for DG manifolds. So it says, uh, given any finite dimensional DG manifold MQ, uh, pick any torsion free of fact connection nabla on M, and then you can cook up an N infinity quasi isomorphism from the DGLA T poly to the DGLA D poly. And moreover, when you look at this uh, N infinity quasi isomorphism phi, so it's an infinity morphism, right? So in fact, it's a it's a sequence of uh, of of morphism, right? From uh, wedge K T poly to D poly. Uh, the first one of those morphism uh, phi one goes from T poly to D poly. Uh, it's a well, we have control over that first Taylor coefficient. That first Taylor coefficient is the HKR map modified by the square root of the, the Todd class. Like you, you think of the Todd class. So if I go back, the Todd class is in here, right? So it's, it's representative would be uh, right, a, a, a bunch of differential forms. And uh, so Essentially, the its square root is good, just going to be a collection of differential forms, and those differential forms act on T poly simply by contraction of differential forms with multi-vector fields. The Atia class also plays a role here. Yeah, because the Atia class is it's you see the Atia class is 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 here. It's 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 used to define the third class, right? Okay. Yeah, so, so phi one is a, is a modification of the HKR map used involving the Todd class. And, uh, and moreover, so this, this phi one, this first Taylor coefficient, right? Because phi is, a, is an L infinity morphism, this first Taylor coefficient phi one is a co chain complex. And so it, it induces a map at the level of the the cohomology and this 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 map phi one in cohomology respects the associative multiplication the wedge product and the cup product on the poly so the same is Yeah, actually, it's yeah. The, the, the yeah, that's the idea. In in, in the proof, that's that, that that's what we do exactly. Okay. So moreover, so so this, as I told you, right? To to construct this infinite quasi isomorphism, you need to choose a connection, a torsion free connection, nabla. Uh, if you take make two different choices of uh, torsion free affine connections, nabla and nabla prime. Right, you get two such uh, an infinity quasi isomorphism phi nabla and phi nabla prime. And uh, well, their first Taylor coefficients are, are related to one another. Actually, one, one can prove that there exists an infinity automorphism A from T poly to itself uh, that uh, essentially uh, uh, relates phi nabla and phi nabla prime in the sense of that this, this diagram commutes. Also the first homogeny, so the phi factors get one. Yeah, yeah, so, so this triangle commutes, that triangle commutes, and that triangle commutes. Okay, uh, and as a consequence, right, if you, if you look at the, the morphism induced by this, uh, First Taylor coefficient at the cohomology level, uh, because as I, as I just said, this phi one respect the associative multiplication. Now uh, the induced map in cohomology actually respects both the Lie brackets, 
and the associative multiplication. So it, it, it's actually a morphism, an isomorphism of Gerstein Abor algebras. And, uh, and this, is a, this, this is a result that was conjectured in 1998 by Konsevit and Schoeket. Do I have more time or should I, should I just stop here? I don't know, I, I can go quickly. Yeah, I have just a few. Okay, so uh, we can specialize the, this, this pair of theorem to uh, three situations, uh, Lie algebra spoliations and complex manifolds. So in, in the Lie algebra case, this is something that was done by uh, Two Penn State students, uh, Xuan Yi Liao and, and Sok Gong, who is here in the, in the room. Um, so, as I told you earlier, if you take a Lie algebra G, then out of it you can form the DG manifold for G shifted by one, whose homological vector field is the Chevalier Hardenberg differential. Right? Then uh, Liao and Sol prove that uh, this cohomology group. Right. If you if you remember, the third class lives in the direct product over k of those cohomology groups. Each one of those cohomology groups can be identified to a degree zero Chevalier and Lambert cohomology group of G with values in the in the module SK G dual. Right. And that's exactly the G invariance in SK G dual. And under this identification, the the third class is mapped to the Duflo elements in S hat G dual. Right? And moreover, the, the HKR map is identified with the Poincare uh, Birkhoff width map of the Lie algebra G. Right? So if you, if you specialize our theorem to the case of the DG manifold G shifted by one, you get this theorem uh, that the PBW morphism modified by the square root of the Duflo element is a, gives an isomorphism of associative algebras from Chevalier-Alenberg of G, Chevalier-Alenberg cohomology of G valued in symmetric of G to Chevalier-Alenberg cohomology of G valued in the universal algebra of G. And this is uh, what's known as the, the concepage Duflo theorem. Uh, this, is a, this is actually a, a generalization of the, set, the famous Duflo theorem. The Duflo theorem is uh, the, the special case uh, where right, you look at the, this isomorphism in degree zero cohomology. Right? Uh, so Konsevich proved this theorem as a consequence of its uh, formality theorem. Uh, well, actually, he kind of gave a succinct proof, and uh, the details of the proof were worked out by Torsion and Pefsner. And essentially, Liao and Sol, Sol just uh, this year posted a paper where they, they gave an alternative proof based on, on our formality theorem for, for DG manifolds. Okay. Uh, let, maybe let me skip this one. Uh, for complex manifolds, uh, if X is a complex manifold, you can form the DG manifold T01X shifted by one, whose homological vector field is a Dolbo operator. And then again, there again, if you, if you uh, specialize our formality theorem for DG manifolds to that special class of DG manifold, this is the theorem that you get. You get that there exists an infinity quasi isomorphism phi from uh, essentially here, uh, anti-holomorphic forms on X valued in polyvector fields on X to anti-holomorphic forms on X valued in polydifferential uh, operators on X. And the, the first Taylor coefficient of that infinity quasi-isomorphism is um, the HKR map modified by the square root of the, the classical third class of the, the complex manifold X. 
And moreover, phi one preserves the, the associative algebra, so the wedge product and the curve product on the right hand side uh, up to homotopy. So, therefore, if you pass to cohomology, to the cohomology level, you get a nice morphism of Gerstner upper algebra at the cohomology level. And you can identify one that's, that was done basically by uh, Chen, Chang, and Xu. Recently, uh, they proved that. Uh, the cohomology of this uh, coaching complex here on the left is, is just the sheaf cohomology of x valued in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the complex of multi-vector fields on x. Uh, and then the cohomology of the space on the right here uh, is identified to the Hoshi cohomology of the complex manifold X. And well, those are like uh, the places uh, right, the, 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 where you can find uh, the, the result that I explained today in details, and, and that's it. <laughs>